The fact that the first thing you're doing is getting headshots. Yeah, I have not even once been asked anything about headshots. They need the company website to be branded well, you know? They do. Thank you, Jesus, for giving Karen this amazing job. Thank you for her first day. I pray that you bless it very much. May the pictures come out just as she wants. Amen. May she be extremely happy about the Lord. Just bless this new time of life we're entering into. Father, thank you for enabling it. We are very grateful to be in your hands and following. So I got a job at a PR agency again. <laughs> Protectant to wet my hair. Oh, oh my gosh. This is bad. Oh no. What's happening? What how did it do that? I don't know. Maybe just leave it, don't do your hair. There you go. It's getting back. Yeah. Someone tell me what just happened. I'm trying to practice how I'll take my photo. So hot. It looks so hot. Seriously. No, but seriously, why did my hair frizz up? I have no idea. But you fix it. It's not fixed. And then let's do just in case. Let's do without jacket. Okay. Just to like to clean. Okay. Sounds good. What's wrong? That's a really Is good it jacket. worship? Or no? Are you a Christian? Yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's That's awesome. I always love meeting other Christians in the city. Yeah. What church is And then you'll gas yeah, smile for you. Yeah. And like just pass me that way. <laughs> good. Face that way. Good morning. I'm back from the headshot session. It was all the way in Brooklyn, so it was like 50 minutes to get there and back. It went really well. I think the pictures came out great. My hair though. Why is it that you can't ever like stylists and hairdressers know how to straighten and curl in like a magic way that like no other person can because I will buy the same straightener and the same like heat protectant. It's just not giving what it was given when I got it installed and I'll show you 
when I got it installed, I made a TikTok of it. It was so, so much better. Look, frizzy and like puffy now. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I ordered um, like a serum. So I think I'm just gonna wait for that to come in. And I ordered a, a comb as well, a hot comb. Those are the two things that she did have that I'm missing. So I'll add both those two things on top of that and then see see how I do tomorrow. But yeah, that was a fail because I really thought I was going to straighten it exactly the way that she did. And that the headshots were really going to eat with, with the straightener. And I ended up messing it up. I, you guys can't really tell but it's just really frizzy and like not as slick and shiny as she did it but it's whatever i'm about to start work now i just got back home i have my first meeting yes, with can. my manager uh, <laughs> i don't know how now that i work from home and lucas also works remotely this is going to be definitely a different shift we do have a a studio slash office and he mainly uses that so I feel like I'll be here for most of my work things unless I have like a an important e meeting and I could take it over there or something but my first meeting is about to begin I have an onboarding session with my manager so she's gonna run me through basically <laughs> everything she's gonna introduce me to all the things and we're I don't know how long it's gonna take but I'm sure she's gonna just give me a rundown of like everything. So I'm excited and then they're gonna Uber messenger my work computer to me in a little bit. And so then I can switch over to my work computer, which is nice that I'll have a work computer and uh, my computer. Hello. <laughs> I was like, this is fun. Meeting is over. That was like maybe an hour. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do like all the things that we discussed in the meeting. I have a to-do list going for today, so I'm just checking away at that, but everyone seems so nice and so sweet and so cool. It feels really nice. I also have some like influencer things I need to do, so I'm gonna take a break. Um, for like an hour i have an hour break every day so i'm gonna take a break and do that unboxing my new work gear Ooh! nice this is nice no! Another day, another day at work! Everyone says good morning to each other in the morning and that's so cute. And then at the end of the work day, everyone says good night. It's the cutest, cutest thing. <laughs> Oh, I love, love a good morning. Guys, every day my hair gets worse and worse. Why is that? Oh, it's still beautiful, baby. <laughs> Why is that? I want to tell you guys a little bit about my job and what I am doing. So I got a job at a PR agency again, but it's not fashion PR like my last agency. So I think some of you know for the past like nine months, I have been I had been doing PR for a design studio. I was doing it four days a week during the summer and then in the fall it was like it went down to two days a week and then it slowly went down to one day a week and it was a contract job so they were it wasn't full-time they weren't like 
I wasn't employed by them, I was just like working for them, so kind of like a freelancer. When I left my fashion PR job, I was doing social media only for a time and then I was like, I feel like social media, just social media. I have a lot of thoughts about full-time social media. Basically, I was doing full-time social media since last March and then freelancing PR for this design studio. I could have just kept doing that. I could have just kept doing social media full-time and freelance PR. But one, four months into freelancing PR, I realized that there is a lot that I don't know when it comes to PR. Like, yes, I knew a lot and I was doing some really cool things for the design studio and I actually knew a lot more than I thought I did but there was also a lot that I didn't know and so I'm like here trying to basically I was building their PR from scratch like managing it I was the only person doing it nobody else knew what I was doing so they wouldn't even talk to me I just walk into the office and just be on my computer all day and try and bring results for them and some of the stuff I did work some of it didn't so in doing that I realized that I actually do love PR well the reason why I even started freelancing for them was because I was looking for a job in addition to full-time influencing because I hadn't done full-time influencing like since college and I think at night I graduated started working full-time I was in office five days a week and I didn't have any time to do social media so when I quit the job I was like oh good I have time to do social media and actually pursue it full-time and I was pursuing it full-time for like a month and I was like wait I'm actually not making enough money to survive in New York City full-time like it's gonna take a long time for me to start being able to live comfortably with social media full-term full-time so in doing PR for the design studio part-time or as a freelancer I realized I really like PR and I really like design and then I came across my newest this place that I work for this agency that was doing PR for design studios and I was like oh that's really fun because I thought me doing PR for a design studio was like a random thing that I just stumbled upon but there was an agency actually doing this and they do PR for other people as well and it seemed like a really cool place to work and I wasn't even looking for a job really at the time I, I love making content but I didn't feel one that the money was enough to only do that and that two like it's like I have so much knowledge in PR as a profession and like in design and in brands and I I love that stuff and that's another part of my interest that I don't show on here a lot but I really am into into corporate <laughs> um corporate when it comes to brands the brands you see on Instagram and social media and in the news like what is the behind the scenes of those brands I I'm obsessed with that kind of stuff so I didn't I felt like oh I, I need to keep pursuing this other passion that I have in addition to making content because I don't think that making content is like is really the end all be all of it I think that I think it's fun but I'm realizing now that like it's really not I'm <laughs> it doesn't bring me as much joy like I feel like I'm happier when I'm doing other things with content and not just doing content alone and I'm also making more when I have like another source of income like it frees me from relying solely on content and solely on brand deals and and like working like a machine to make money like I can create content freely and more authentically when I'm not relying on it I reached out to this company they weren't hiring at the time and then by God's grace like quickly after i i met up with them and i talked to them they liked me i liked them and then they were like i don't know if we're gonna be hiring anytime soon but like we'll keep you on the radar and like three weeks later they reached out and said that they were hiring so i interviewed for a position interview went really well i met with everyone on the team they sounded so lovely and nice and everything just felt so aligned also you guys know I've been obsessed with that burnt orange color. I keep talking about it all ever since January. Ever since I changed the Welcome to the Kingdom color to that burnt orange color. And because it's the color of my duvet cover and pillows, pillowcase. It felt aligned that that was literally one of their main company colors. Was that like burnt orange that I've been obsessing over all year.
went through all the rounds of interview and got offered the job on Valentine's Day. So that was a good Valentine's Day. I was so happy. And then right after Valentine's Day, the next day, February 15th, we went to LA, Lucas and I, to visit his family. And also it was his mom's birthday. She was turning 60, so she had a dance party, a 60s themed dance party. I was in LA for like maybe 10 days. I didn't vlog <laughs> because I truly felt like, wow, like for the first time, like I don't feel like I need to be sharing every single waking moment of my time because I don't know, I felt freer and lighter knowing that I didn't need to record. Now I'm back and immediately, the day after I landed, I started working. So it's been a really good first two days. And so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a brief update on it. And I'm still doing PR, but now it's more like, it's not fashion PR, it's, it's more <laughs> like tech. Oh, there's some tech, there's some health and wellness brands, some food and hospitality some design companies so it's a really nice change from strictly fashion pr which was a nightmare i'm not lying to you fried spring rolls sauce sauce my bon me that's gorgeous also guys this is a, a change Man. We never order lunch. Boom. <gasps> and then I got uh, like a a pork rice bowl. I was gonna say we never order lunch. Like we always are uh, always cook lunch. Well, look at his mom <laughs> paid for our meal. Thank you, mom. Thank you, mom. Bless the rest of our day, Jesus. In your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. With the way the camera is angled. You look so much bigger than I do. I am. And truthfully, just a day that I knew you were the right person for. And I'm so grateful that you're here and just had a great day with you. So cheers to you. I definitely could see a future with Joey. I am at Davida's apartment and we're about to record our podcast. She's recording something with me featured and then I'm recording, I'm featuring her on my podcast. So it's kind of like a, a collab. But guys, this apartment is, it means everything to me. It's so cute. It's so cute. First of all, you walk in, you see that, the stairs, the loft, the kitchen. <laughs> it's just the quintessential New York, like exposed brick apartment. It's so cute. It's adorable. She's gonna walk in now. And she's also the best at decorating things. It wasn't even oh. <laughs> It wasn't there. No? So what's that? <laughs> Another package? Mm. I was showing them your living room. No, it's not pretty! That's cute! Wait. But wait, look at that. Except, is your iPhone the new one? No, it's not. Okay, then I do have a mic. <laughs> you have a what? A mic! Oh. <laughs> Check one, two, one, two. Hi. I'm obsessed with this little thing that Davida gave me. I will have it in all my videos from now on. I think that 
it makes so much more sense because if I'm far away from the camera, yeah, I'm obsessed with it. It's so cute and so tiny and just like the perfect little microphone. I just came back from the gym and I don't know, I was just doing some thinking. It's like the workout was nice. I did Pilates and then I did some weights after. So I was just going to do Pilates. And then in the middle of the class, the teacher was like, this is just a warm up. After this, you can go lift weights and do the treadmill this is just to warm up your body i was like i thought this was the workout and so i was like i let that motivate me a bit and i was like okay fine i'm going to go work on my glutes there's like a booty zone area in the gym so and i'm i was thinking about just like life in general basically how everything is just feel act observe feel act observe feel act observe and you feel a way you act upon that feeling one way or another and then you observe how your actions made you feel and then based on that feeling you act on another thing so you're just feeling things you act on that feeling you observe what the consequences of those actions were good or negative and then with that feeling you make another action in like the grand scheme of things so i'm just thinking about where i am right now and i had to snap out of myself i was like yo i'm literally only 23 and I think there's so much pressure to succeed right now. Success is good, but you have to kind of define success for yourself. And I was going based off of what success looked like for other people. And we all do that. And you kind of make other people's successes your definition of success. And so I sat down like a couple of days ago and I was writing down my definition of success and it's just very different. There's a lot of things that have been painted very vividly to me via like prophecy. And right now when I, I look at like my life and what I'm doing and all this stuff, it doesn't look anything like the prophecy. You're kind of like, okay, how is this prophecy going to come to pass? Because it feels like I'm not doing you know, what needs to be done for this prophecy to come alive. And I think that when I received said prophecy, I automatically made it about me and it became about what I can do to achieve the prophecy, which is so weird because when God gives you a prophecy, he's telling you what he's going to do. He's not saying this is what you have to do. So what am I going to do? And I'm and I'm making up plans and strategies and plans and strategies and marketing plans and strategies. Like just working, 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 racking my brain up and nothing I can do will measure up because it was his prophecy to fulfill, not mine. Why did I take up the load on myself? And even just a couple of days ago, I was rereading past journal entries and there was a journal entry in August about a prophecy I received about writing and how God will flow through my writing and completely forgot about it. I'm looking back through my journal so I can upload a Substack entry. And I see that and I'm like, oh my goodness, I've been writing every single day for the past month. And I completely forgot that I had written that in there. And so I, you know, I didn't start working on my writing skills as soon as I got that prophecy. I just wrote it down and forgot about it. And then soon enough, I found myself in the middle of writing a devotional every single day. And and then I look back and I'm like, oh, so that kind of is being fulfilled right now. And so why should I worry about all the other prophecies? They will be fulfilled in due time. And so I guess I'm saying this transparently because... I am really excited about my job right now. I'm really excited about working. <laughs> and oh, that does not 
kind of go in line with what I felt like my life would look like, which was just doing social media full time, you know, and then get getting whatever, making a living off of it for the rest of my life and that ushering me into like different things. And I can still do that. But, you know, when something just kind of conflicts with what you thought, you're like, oh, OK, where do we go from here? Because I'm I feel like this is a goth thing, this new area of my life this job the way I got it was also very like kind of out of the ordinary in a way and so it all feels very aligned and it all feels very godly and trying to reconcile that with okay if this is what God wants me for me right now what's going to happen with what he said about me you know you know time and time ago so yeah, my camera died. <laughs> but I guess I just say that to say that we are taking it one day at a time. It is not our jobs to write our lives out for us. It's already been written and we just have to follow it day by day and not figure out where like God's going to come in because he's in it in every single step of the way. He's already in it. He's already written it. He's He's already seen this day. And something crazy that I heard from Apostle Joshua Selman a while ago was that like God exists outside of time, right? So if he says you are going to be this or you're going to do this, it's already happened because he sees the entire lifespan you don't see it now because you're in today but he actually sees your whole life and he's like that's going to happen and it's already been done because he's already said it and he's already seen that it's it is it is it just is it's not that it's going to be it is you just have to get to the day where it is but it already is so yeah i am kind of giving myself more grace for like being in my early 20s and thinking so deeply about everything like just chill out chill out take it one day at a time feel what you're feeling act upon that feeling make sure it's a good action and move on to the next action and just take it one day at a time and always know that god's in every step of the way and you just have to sit back and let it, all, let it all unfold and do what you're being called to do and just let it all happen with God's grace. I hope that makes sense. I just, I just really want to get out of that mindset that like my life has to look a certain way at 23 or at 24 or at 25. It, it doesn't. And measuring my life with someone else's is not going to do me any good because that's their story to tell and this is my story to tell and whatever god says about you it already is and you just have to live in the days to observe them happen (laughs) okay um i'm going to end it here Thank you for watching this vlog. I'm super excited about, I'm really happy actually in life right now. I'm very, very happy. I kind of, I don't say it often because I feel like I'm not, I never, I rarely experience true satisfaction, Um, but I'm very satisfied at the moment and I'm very happy. So yeah, that's good. I hope that you feel the same way or that you take away some grace and satisfaction for where you are in life right now because you're meant to be there and God has already written out your steps. You just have to walk with him and see it all unfold. Okay. I will talk to you in my next video. Bye-bye.